Hey, what's up guys, Bobo Rail here, and today I've got another dev blog breakdown for the next game in the World War 1 game series, Isanzo. Okay, so this is dev blog number 4, and its primary focus was giving us more details regarding the primary game mode, and how each game will actually play out. This game mode is called Offensive, and if you've watched the first dev blog video in this series, then you'd already know that it consists of two teams, obviously attackers and defenders, and the attackers will progressively push through a map by capturing objectives. Today's dev blog tells us about the specifics of respawning and what these objectives will really look like. So first, let's talk about this spawn system. There will be buildable tents and fortifications, which will operate as spawn points for the team who built them, and these can be built by both attackers and defenders. The closest thing I can think of to compare them to would be the fobs from squad, but I'm curious if placing these outposts will be restricted to the squad leader exclusively. These spawn points can also be destroyed by the attackers, who are equipped with dynamite, which I should add can be defused by the defenders. They also mention that there will be other forms of buildable defenses which can be destroyed. To quote them directly, defensive engineers can repair gaps in barbed wire defenses, construct additional heavy machine gun nests, or add other defensive measures. And in favor of the attackers, heavy machine guns causing trouble, storm the position and sabotage them to take them permanently out of play. So I imagine this is why that wire cutter from the first trailer got so much attention, as it will likely be one of the many tools necessary to break down constructed defenses. Now, the same logic of destruction will also apply to the objectives as well. Some objectives will be artillery pieces that must be exploded with dynamite, but there will also be some normal body count cap objectives like we see in Tannenberg. If an artillery piece is detonated, it is permanently out of the game, but normal objectives can be retaken or lost any number of times. So each map will look something like this, with both the normal cap radius and detonation objectives, and only when all objectives are captured or destroyed by the attackers will they be able to push onto the next sector. I should also note that there will be an intermission period after a sector has been captured for both sides to regroup after it's been cleared. And I imagine this will look just like it does in Verdun. So if I had to compare this to other games outside the series, if any of you have never played the other two entries, it's basically the Grand Operations Artillery mode from Battlefield 5 mixed with Standard Breakthrough. In short, this aspect of constructible and destructible defenses and objectives is what the game will add to the series, while still taking key elements of objective play and frontline combat from Tannenberg and Verdun. This linear yet nuanced gameplay system is intended to capture the essence of the war on the Italian front, and to do that requires a pretty drastic change in format, but from what they're describing here, it seems it will still feel like it's a part of the series by taking some gameplay aspects from previous titles. Anyways, that's all the information I've got for you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. This has been Bobo Rail, and I'll catch you all in the next one.